Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to another card making video. Today I'm using the adorable stamp set called Cute Chemist by My Favorite Things. So I'm going to be coloring up both of the images here as well as some of the accessories that come along in the stamp set. There are a number of really adorable sentiments in this set as well. So to start off, I'm going to do the skin tones. I am doing the little boy here in a darker skin tone. I'm using E23, E13, and E11 with a little bit of E00. So this is going to give him a nice, kind of like a caramel color skin tone. So I'm just making sure to put my darkest color, which is the E23, under his hairline. I also added some to his ears and around uh, that area of his face. I made sure to add some shading to where the fingers are kind of touching each other on his hands and underneath his neck. Then I brought in my first midtone, the E13, and blended that out and brought it down in those areas a little bit more. Blended that out with the E11 and then going over very minimal spots with the E00. For the little girl, I'm going to do her skin tone a little bit lighter. So I'm using E13, E11, and E00. Again, adding the darkest shade around her hair and by her ears, under her neck, and then on her hands just the tiniest bit there where her sleeve is and then where she has her fingers wrapped around the little beaker. So just going to do a three color blend for her using the midtone E11 and then I'll blend that all out with the E00. I am going to use some R20 for their cheeks and I'll blend that out using the E00 as well. <laughs> I love the little expression on their faces. So I'm going to do some dark brown for his hair. So I'm using E49 as my darkest color and I'm using that just a little bit where the darkest shadows would be. So where his hair is laying over top of another piece of hair and underneath those areas as well where they would cast a shadow. And then I'm bringing in the E27. I'm just going over that E49 and bringing it out just a little bit more using a flicking motion. I am going to go over his hair twice just to get the color that I want, but now I'm going over with the E57. Again, just bringing out that color each time I'm adding a new color onto the paper. Finishing that off with the E35, and I felt like the E49 that I had used was just, there wasn't enough there and I needed to use more of the mid-tones as well. I find once I get the first layer down, I can see kind of what I like and what I don't like and then I can go back over a second time. So you can see here I'm using a lot more of the E27 and the E57, bringing that out and leaving only a little bit of area left for the highlight, which is the uh, lightest color. So for her hair, I'm going to do a blonde hair color. So I'm using E35, E53, E51, and then you're going to see me bring in the Y11. So I'm starting off again with the darkest, which is my E35. So I wanted to do that around the part of her hair and where her hair is touching her face, and also where the strands of her braid is meeting. So once I do that, I'm going to come in with the E53 and the E51, and here's where I'm bringing in the E11. Again, just like I did with him, I'm going to come back in a second time and just darken this up a little bit. I wanted there to be more contrast in the hair. So now I'm bringing in the E53 and then the E51, and I'll go over one more time with the Y11. I really love the golden blonde color this combination gives. So once I get her finished up, I'm going to move on to his pants. So I wanted them to be almost like a denim color, so I'm using B99, B97, 95, and 93. Again, just as I have been the whole time, I'm going in with my darkest color. 
I find this the easiest. Sometimes I do switch it up, but for the most part now I do darkest first. If you're just starting out, you might want to start with your lightest just so you can figure out where you want the shading to be and to kind of get used to blending. So I'm bringing in the B97. I think I'm actually already on to the B95 here. I'm going to blend all that in with the B93. And you can see I gave a little bit of shading where those notches are on the inside of his legs, underneath his lab coat, and then down by his shoes where there's folds of his pants. To bring this color over, I decided to do the paper on her little clipboard just trying to carry some of the colors over into both of the images. For her pants, I wanted to do more of a light denim or just kind of like an aqua teal color. So I'm using B45, BG01, and B00. I do have to do the tip-to-tip -tip technique for the BG45 and the BG01, but they do blend really nicely together once you kind of help it along with the blending. So I'm going to add this color to one of the beakers. Again, just trying to really have some of those colors carry through the card. I'll do this long cylindrical, is that the right word? The long beaker here as well. I end up using the larger beaker images on the inside of the card. For his shirt, I decided to do a green color. I'm using YG17, YG03, and YG01. I did go back over this a second time as well just to bring out that shadow. So I again, I'm, I'm not going to show you all the coloring once I've done one of the colors, but I did color up a couple of those little jar images as well. And now I'm moving on to the pink for her shirt. So I'm using R39, R85, and R81. For their shoes, I just wanted to keep them a black color, so I'm using C7, C5, and C3. I put my C1 and my C00 markers there just because I'm going to do the whites with that. But for the shoes, to make them look black, just using those three darkest colors there. And leaving quite a bit of highlight on there. So for the lab coats, I'm using the C3 as my darkest. I'm touching the tip of my marker very lightly here because I do want their lab coats to look white. So I want as much white showing as possible, but just giving it some depth and dimension here. So underneath where his legs are and the undercoat of his lab coat will be quite a bit darker. Coming back in with the C3, just to blend that out a little bit more. No, sorry, the C1. And to finish that off, I will bring in the C00. Just going to blend that in really nicely, again, leaving a lot of white space here. So you can see I'm not going over the entire image with that C00 because it still has a little bit of color in it. It's not like the colorless blender, uh, which I had used for a long time, but I really like blending the C1 with the C00 now. So I decided to do her clipboard in the same colors as his hair, just leaving out that darkest color. So bringing in the E27, the E57, and the E35. So that will give her that dark brown as well. So for the background, I wanted a really light background. I'm using the English Brick Stencil by MFT. And I'm grabbing my makeup brush here and I'm using Distress Oxide in Hickory Smoke. I'm just dabbing that off on a small piece of laminated cardstock. And I sped this up quite a bit, but basically I want the darkest to be in the center and then I want it to fade out to a white. I am gonna cut this panel down. I cut it slightly larger than an A2 size at four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll bring in a die here in a moment and cut that out. So I'm using some Bristol Smooth cardstock for the blending. I use Spectrum Noir Premium cardstock for coloring my images. And here I'm just going over with the brush to kind of smooth that out and for there to be some color 
in between the bricks so it's not stark white. So just cleaned off my makeup brush with a microfiber cloth and now I'm using the stitched wonky dies here. I'm going to cut that with my Big Shot and then I had every intention to heat emboss this sentiment so I used my powder tool and I'm just lining up my images here so I can get my sentiment where I want it to be. I kind of want it to be sitting where their legs are going a bit inward. So I'm going to grab my travel stamp platform here and make sure that sentiment is nice and straight and then I'll grab out my VersaFine Black Onyx ink and stamp that out a couple of times. Now the reason I said I had every intention to heat emboss this was because Distress Oxides take a while to dry and I wasn't patient enough. That often happens when you're filming videos and you can see here the embossing powder stuck all around the sentiment. So instead of scrapping this, I just took one of my paintbrushes and just took off all of the clear embossing powder. I didn't heat it at all. And so now we're just going to have a stamped sentiment on the card. So the sentiment says, I'm sorry for my reaction. I thought it would be cute to put the let's bond sentiment on the inside. So here's where I have all these little beakers or scientist jars. And I'm just going to decorate the inside with those. I'm really trying this year to decorate the insides of my cards more. So it's February and I'm doing a pretty good job with that. We'll see how long I can keep that up for the rest of the year. So now that I have that done, I just need to use my bone folder there just to get that crease so my card base will lay flat. I'm going to adhere the panel onto my card base with some liquid adhesive. So this is going to be right on the panel. I decided to pop up the little characters on some foam adhesive. So I'm going to get him into place. I did color uh, and cut out this little explosion smoke of cloud which I thought was really cute and then I'm going to adhere her down. Once I get her down I feel like something is missing and so I played around with adding the little I don't even know what it's called I feel like I forget all of my chemistry but this little element here that comes in the stamp set. So I inked it up thinking I was going to use it, but it just didn't look right. I mean, that's not the purpose of it to come out of the little beaker there. So instead of wasting it, I just thought I would add it to the inside of the card. I had kind of given up at this point, but was still thinking of what I could add. So I went on and add, added some gel detail here. This is my black glaze pen. I just used that on their eyes. Then I'm bringing my white Signo gel pen in to add some highlights to our little girl and boy chemists here. Then I decided to bring in some Nouveau drops in the morning dew. Uh, the morning dew acts like a uh, glossy accents. So this one here that I'm actually using first is the White Blizzard and it's got some glitter in it. So I was using that for the bubbles and on the top of where the liquid is in the little jars. And I added it around his little smoke bubble as well. Here's where I decide I'm going to stamp these hearts. And I do that right on the paper. I end up not liking this even though I'm adding the white blizzard to it. It just didn't look right because his little smoke cloud had the white, the crisp white background to it. So I end up stamping the hearts onto some white paper and I fussy cut them out. You'll see that when I show you the card here momentarily. It looks much better. I thought I could get away with just stamping it on the background, but the difference was just too much between that little puff cloud and those hearts. 
So here's where I'm adding the morning dew to the glasses and the jars. You can see now I have the hearts on. I like that much better. I added some matching sequins and that's the card for today. So I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun playing with this stamp set. I'll see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.